Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to TBR's Devices Business Quarterly Research Webcast outlining the recent results of the Devices Benchmark. I'm Allison Crawford, and I'll be hosting today's session. In the next 45 minutes, analyst Jack Narcotta and executive analyst Ezra Gotha will delve into the trends driving the results featured in the Computing Benchmark to which you subscribed, followed by Q&A of these trends and how they will affect you. Before Jack and Ezra get started, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items with you. First, we're recording today's session and posting it on our YouTube site, TBRI channel. We encourage you to visit the channel to watch this presentation or any of the others we've posted. Second, we'd like to hear your opinions and thoughts on the materials we're presenting. Please send any questions or comments to the Q&A or chat function. We'll address them at the end of the presentation. Or if you'd like to set up a client inquiry for more detailed discussion, please reach out directly to Jack and Ezra at the end of the webinar to set up your conversation. Third, we'll send out the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the webinar. You can also find the slides, as well as other thought leadership pieces, webinar decks, and commentaries on SlideShare at www.slideshare.net backslash TBR underscore market underscore insight. And I'll share all these social media links with you again at the end of the presentation. Now let me introduce Jack Narcotta and Ezra Gothal. Jack has more than 15 years' experience in the IT industry, which ranges from the early days of the Ethernet and telecommunications to the current revolution in mobile technology. As an analyst in TBR's computing practice, Jack is primarily responsible for reporting on hardware vendors such as Motorola, Nokia, Samsung, and Sony, as well as focusing on trends and opportunities within the Chrome, Android, and iOS ecosystems. Ezra leads our coverage of HP hardware, Lenovo, and Apple, and is the principal researcher on projects including consumer and business tablets, PC warranties, PC supply chains, mobile device strategies, mobile device management, app stores, and social networking. He's been covering the computing industry for over 20 years, and his insight has proven invaluable to our hardware clients. And with that, let me hand this over to Jack. Thanks very much, Allison, and thank you all for attending today. Um, we certainly look forward to a two-way discussion after the uh, presentation concludes roughly in about 25 or 30 minutes, and we'll leave as much time as we possibly can for your questions. So without any further ado, let's get started today. Um, for the last 24 months, what we've seen um, with our benchmark uh, report and the data that has uh, been contained in it is that the waves of change that are being propagated throughout the marketplace. And if you attended last quarter's or happened to read our report from last quarter, what we saw was that traditional PC users, actual bona fide users of PCs, have now been eclipsed by users of mobile devices. And the, the definition of a TBR um, mobile device is a smartphone or a tablet. Um, notebook PCs are beginning to blur that line. That's certainly a discussion for another day. Um, but now what we're seeing in 1Q13 is that the form factors that have flooded the marketplace, smartphones and, and especially tablets, and uh, specifically tablets of 7 or 8 inches in screen size, are exerting a tremendous amount of influence on not only the revenue and profit uh, landscape, if you will, but certainly on the go-to-market strategies as well as the resource management partnership and product development initiatives that companies are uh, per, uh, pursuing or acting on today. So today we're going to discuss uh, TBR's uh, computing devices benchmark landscape and then drill down into our three key, uh, our key regions of study, which are PCs, tablets, and smartphones. Um, every quarter we do publish an in-depth analysis of this landscape and uh, that encompasses the top 25 companies in the market. We rank the top 19 and uh, typically the, the remaining six are companies such as Intel, AMD, Broadcom, your chipset manufacturers that are not directly included in the benchmark but certainly have a degree of uh, say within that uh, particular marketplace. And through the uh, compilation of this report, we take a look at the financial metrics and product shipment data for each company to uncover trends in the devices market. And for this quarter, um, we found three particular areas that, uh, that we'd like to focus on for today's discussion. One is that the, the definition of a PC um, now more or less has to include Android and uh, by extension Chrome. Um, so devices such as um, HP's recently announced um, Android notebook PCs as well as the top four Chromebook manufacturers in the marketplace are 
beginning to blur the lines between what a mobile device is and what a traditional PC computing device is. Second, small devices, tablets in particular, are driving huge growth within the marketplace. And then third, the prospect of, um, of establishing leadership in emerging markets may actually wind up being a Pyrex victory for some of these vendors. Uh, Pyrex in the sense that the, the, uh, the amount of resources, um, effort for um, increasingly diminished returns, especially in ultra competitive uh, smartphone environments um, where ASP is rapidly beginning to close in on $100, if not eclipse it already. Um, the limited revenues are certainly going to limit some of the profit and margins that vendors are used to, so we'll take a look at some of the drivers that um, are going to give some vendors pause while some vendors will more or less be compelled by competition to go whole into the, um, to go whole into the marketplace. Next slide, please. Okay. So, in general, what we've seen is that the PC industry is uh, certainly struggling. Um, that is uh, certainly something um, that goes uh, ne nearly without saying. But what we're seeing now is a return, in some ways, to engineering and developing new uh, new form factors and really focusing on things that are um, that generate consumer interest and leverage a lot of the of the uh, trend, the the upward trending technologies and integrating those particular um, aspects into new form factors be it a, a Android PC um, that has uh, Windows functionality from what we've seen from some of the APAC vendors where they can run um, dual operating systems. Um, so certainly, the influence of the tablet marketplace is beginning to dictate um, the strategies and the go-to-market, um, the go-to-market campaigns and go-to-market initiatives that companies are uh, beginning to follow as they plow into emerging markets. And uh, the crux of it all is uh, finding a way to reestablish the product and the uh, the future wave of products that will be sold into the next set of subscribers. Um, Google's Eric Schmidt likes to refer to APAC and um, all the emerging markets over in Asia as the next billion subscribers. Certainly the PC industry um, folds into that strategy as well. And figuring out the right product mix, the right marketing messaging, and uh, perhaps most importantly in some markets, figuring out the right price to be able to compete with a roster of vendors that seems to grow by the day as Android vendors come into the computing marketplace and computing vendors start to branch into um, st start to branch into some of the mobile arenas um, where Samsung, Apple, and a roster of APAC vendors uh, currently hold sway. So, to really understand what the market is. Uh, more or less all about. What we have here is that it's, it's actually quite clear that the mobile, uh, the mobile industry completely remains king. And while it is expected to um, not relinquish its crown anytime soon, what we're starting to see in some of the lower bands is um, trends for um, the PC companies in particular, and we're starting to see it within the mobile ecosystem as well. And that is that scale truly benefits um, the leaders in the marketplace. With so much change happening so quickly, whether it's new devices in the mobile marketplace, um, constant, uh, constant product refreshes by um, APAC vendors such as Huawei and ZTE bringing new phones into the marketplace as fast as they can, as well as Samsung, certainly. And then PC vendors um, bringing out new form factors to be able to, um, to either combat the attrition of their PC install base to mobile devices or get their toes back into the mobile arena, such as Lenovo and HP. What we're seeing is that the companies that have the largest scale or companies that are larger in scale than their peers are able to ride out the, the waves of change that are uh, being generated by the market leaders in the marketplace. And what we have is 
the vendors that are able to uh, more, uh, I guess, more closely monitor their their expenses or more closely monitor the margins and the supply chain that they have, um, being able to tolerate. Uh, fluctuations in that when you're a larger company certainly uh, gives you the resources to be able to ride it out for a longer period of time compared to some of the smaller vendors that we have that um, when combined make up actually a pretty appreciable um, uh, a pretty appreciable amount of the profit and revenue pools uh, but they're at risk now of being squeezed out by vendors that are larger in scale and are uh, are continuing to land grab as they look for footholds to, to, to secure their own initiatives in the marketplace. So specifically getting down into PCs, what we've seen over the last quarter is that Windows 8 is a uh, certainly a differentiator for some enterprises. Um, what, what we're seeing is, is that it's a differentiator within the form factors the ability to bring a, a touch screen interface or or the ability to <clears throat> and the ability to uh, bring a a a mobile like or a tablet like interface to the everyday work pc um, is a great promise for for the enterprise but what we're seeing um, is that vendors are continuing to take a wait and see approach in developing strategies around the core um, around the core upgrade process, not necessarily uh, relying on the, uh, the release of a new operating system um, to to instigate sales um, or protect their uh, or protect their current installation base. But what they're what they're doing is looking for ways to augment the PC experience. So things like a tablet PC that is perhaps bundled with a keyboard, a mouse, a display. Um, being able to leverage scale as far as um, supply chains or distribution networks to bring um, to bring more affordable devices into the marketplace today, and ultimately the result of that is um, companies with uh, once again companies with the largest scale are able to benefit from the most by being able to one um, release a suite of new products that are aimed specifically at consumers. Um, or their usage habits, which are increasingly changing um, as the tablets uh, begin to proliferate the marketplace, as well as uh, being able to price the products not only to compete within um, some of the emerging market segments, but being able to uh, price them effectively so that profits can, can, can still be made. So when we take a look at the landscape here um, with the size of the circles representing the, the amount of revenue, the players uh, certainly come as no surprise. And what we're seeing here is, um, in fact, a, a continuation of what we've seen over the last six months, and especially the contraction of the PC market that we saw last quarter, in that the PC business as a whole act actually re um, remains profitable. Uh, marginally profitable, certainly, for, for a uh, large majority of the companies. But one of the trends that we've noticed is that that pool is beginning to get smaller. And again, um, this favors company that have the largest scale are able to tolerate and endure these margins, um, simultaneously protecting their install bases, but generating enough profit to be able to move into new markets, to be able to capitalize on uh, the burgeoning PC demand in China and and uh, parts of Southeast Asia as those um, expanded markets become more computer literate, if you will, or, or more technology becomes available to them. Um, and then certainly being able to uh, price, a, uh, price their products accordingly um, and introduce new form factors that are aggressively marketed to meet changing usage habits uh, without slipping into um, operating into the red. So what we have now is uh, a quick look at, at the tablet marketplace. Um, one of the, really one of the differentiators for the, the, the tablet, um, and my colleague Ezra um, has uh, had had an epiphany the uh, had had an epiphany the the other day um, that the the definition of a 
mobile computer, uh, be it a tablet or whatever the next uh, form factor happens to be, is being able to, and I think I'm paraphrasing here, is that being able to use your PC regardless of where you are. So does the tablet PC or does the promise of a tablet PC uh, bring you to a point where you can use and operate your PC while you're standing up, while you're at your desk, while you're in the office, while you're in an airport? Does that, uh, does that form factor allow you to do what you have come to expect from a traditional PC? And one of the things that is really, uh, that really ties the value proposition of a tablet PC is the, the ubiquity of Microsoft Office applications. Because what we've seen is that the form factor is, in some cases, it's actually a little hit or miss. Um, the iPad is great, it's portable. Um, the battery life, it's extensibility in being able to uh, have applications built into it as well as increasing support for Android applications. But it's still lacking in some of the actual bona fide uh, uh, more ingrained applications that we use every day, your Excel, your PowerPoint, your Words, uh, applications that should, in some respects, benefit the tablet PC to a great deal. But what we're seeing is that the tablet form factor, combined with some of the consumer hesitation and enterprise uh, deferred uh, purchases or taking a wait and see attitude on that particular um, operating system on, on Windows 8 is really holding back the, the established order, if you will, within the tablet marketplace, which opens the doors for mobile vendors such as Samsung to be able to get into the marketplace, to be able to establish a, a degree of footholds that they might not have have normally had. What we're seeing is that Samsung and Apple are taking their own tracks when it comes to some of the enterprise initiatives. Um, prior to the launch of the Galaxy S4, Samsung was very adamant about um, their Knox security initiatives as well as some additional software-based security um, using a program they called SAFE. And what we're seeing is vendors in the mobile marketplace are bringing their their uh, their cachet, if you will, with their consumer devices into the marketplace, into the enterprise marketplace, and uh, trying to generate a halo effect that they've um, th that they've enjoyed within the consumer marketplace back into the um, more or less riding on the backs of the enterprise users um, as they ask uh, through BYOD initiatives uh, to be able to use their Samsung Galaxy or their iPhone or their iPad on a corporate network. So when we take a look at the overall tablet marketplace, when we compare um, our, our tablet revenues to, to gross margins, certainly it doesn't come as any surprise that Apple is far and away the market leader. But really what's exciting here is that there's a host of vendors that lie underneath where Apple is. And this is really where um, a large majority, certainly not all of it, but where a large majority of the innovation, uh, the, the market movers, if you will, and a lot of the influence is going to be coming from the marketplace. So your APAC vendors such as ZTE, Acer, Lenovo, Asus, Huawei, um, some respects uh, Sony, um, e even though they're targeting primarily more of the iPad, the full-size iPad market, these APAC vendors are really driving a lot of the technology that will be put into the next generation of devices. So what we're starting to see is more five, six, seven, eight inch tablets that are continuing to drive the price down and will uh, certainly directly influence some of the strategies of Apple as well as Asus um, and certainly with uh, with prices continuing to tumble, what, what we'll see is these vendors will begin to move more into the middle while margins remain relatively flat as the cost to produce the devices. Um, the, the market has yet to produce the scale for these companies as it does with Apple being able to control a large degree of its supply chain. We'll start to see 
more more growth in units shipped than we would in actual margin gains as at this point vendors are more concerned about grabbing as much market share as they possibly can and establishing a, a captive audience, if you will, of, uh, of uh, customers in the very important $100 to $200 device price bands within emerging markets. So now that we've talked about mobile um, for, from a tablet perspective, what we'll see in, in the smartphone marketplace is a very similar strategy to how the APAC vendors are beginning to adapt their tablet strategies into emerging markets. So what we have here is um, sales and marketing initiatives are going to be of paramount importance. One vendor, um, certainly you can probably guess who that is, is that Samsung realizes the value of driving as much market demand as possible to promote revenue growth, to maintain margins by building um, as many devices as they possibly can through uh, more or less a blueprint that they replicate throughout their product line. And what we're starting to see is that the growth is being driven primarily, um, not overwhelmingly so, but, dr but primarily being driven by the uh, lower cost focus vendors or um, probably more apt to say that the growth is being driven by consumers demanding lower cost devices that cost less than $200. Um, typically, what we're starting to see is those prices are continuing to trend down. Um, in some markets, we're seeing smartphone-like feature phones that are rapidly approaching the $100, or in case of uh, a um, Nokia Asha or a Samsung Rex device, they've already smashed through that barrier and are now being priced at anywhere from $60 to $80, depending on the region. And with so many users in these emerging markets um, transitioning or ready to transition from their legacy feature phone or, um, or similar mobile device that might use a data card or similar 3G connectivity, what we're seeing is uh, devices, product strategies, marketing initiatives that are aimed squarely at, uh, at capitalizing on as much market share um, within these markets as, as quickly and as uh, in the case of a Samsung or any of the market leaders as cost effectively as possible. So when we take a look at the mobile market landscape, say for the outlier Lenovo, uh, way, way over there on the right, certainly having a, a home base, if you will, or to use a sports analogy, um, home, home court advantage in its uh, native country of China. It's, uh, it's actually, this is actually one of the things that, that surprised me a little bit in how crowded the marketplace has become when you factor in um, the dramatic revenue growth that has been seen over the last few years. Typically, um, Apple and Samsung are grabbing the headlines. And again, similar to the tablet marketplace, what we're seeing is that the, the growth, the innovation, um, certainly um, Apple and Samsung will continue to produce their flagship devices and, and dictate what the, techno, uh, the technology capabilities of some of these devices are. But the innovation and being able to adapt product lines into the marketplaces is certainly going to be driven by um, by the, the muddled middle, if you will, where there's a number of vendors that are all jockeying for position and really attempting to either, um, through a roster of affordable devices, either undercut the vendors or when we take a look at some of the product lines of China-based Huawei and, and also um, their peer company in China, ZTE, making the bridge from, uh, from, pr from premium devices uh, excuse me, making the bridge from, from feature phone or low-end devices into the premium end of the market to try and boost their margins on par with an Apple or a Samsung. So in closing, uh, let's take a look at the main trends that we have covered today. Um, first of all, that the, the definition of a PC certainly needs to expand beyond uh, uh, or at least needs to be um, needs to begin to expand beyond uh, just the Windows ecosystem and um, taking a look at some of the Android and Chrome devices that are being introduced into the marketplace. 
we certainly can't underestimate the influence that tablets have not only on revenue and profits within the marketplace, but on the go-to-market strategies and the product development strategies of not only the mobile vendors trying to get into the enterprise and further into consumer markets, but for Windows PC-based manufacturers trying to grow out of their uh, current install base and generate momentum within the mobile marketplace. And finally, um, the, the next wave of devices is likely to come from APAC markets and the rabid uh, consumer demand out there for either, in some cases, what is their actual bona fide, their, their first bona fide computing device, or they're making a significant leap in technology from a feature phone to a uh, new smartphone or tablet or both. And what we're taking a look at here um, is a uh, just a brief overview of some of the things that will be woven into not only the syndicated reports on the companies um, that uh, we publish every quarter, but these are some of the themes that we've highlighted for what will be in next quarter's benchmark, which is expected to publish in uh, the first half of December of this year, uh, excuse me, September of this year. And um, Tablets continue to remain a focus as well as um, as well as emerging markets. Um, we're con we're going to continue to get more granular with those particular uh, with those uh, particular areas, and uh, certainly uh, feel free to keep in touch with us throughout the quarter. And um, we would certainly um, like to open up the opportunity to have any briefings um, or perhaps gain some additional insight in how we can better represent. Uh, the impact of these particular initiatives in the marketplace. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Allison, and uh, we'll be very happy to take your questions. Great. Thanks, Jack. Uh, and thanks to those of you who have sent through questions. As Jack mentioned, now is the time to send through anything, uh, any questions or comments or feedback um, we can provide to Jack. Uh, and hopefully we can get some commentary from Ezra, our uh, guru in residence here at TVR. Uh, the first question we have, guys, is what role or influence do you think Chromebooks have on the at-large computing landscape, especially on consumer PC markets? Well, what, what, from what we've seen is um, we've seen uh, pu the publicly available information that's out there um, in addition to the modeling um, as well as um, the forecasting that, that we do here at, at uh, TBR is the impact on revenue is very limited. Uh, the device um, averages, depending on the model that you're seeking, whether it's um, a top-of-the-line HP or, or Samsung or a specialized device from Lenovo or a uh, truly cost-effective, uh, cost you know, sub-$200 device from Acer. Um, what what the real impact to Chromebooks will be will it, one of the things that uh, that that we're going to keep an eye on is how it adapts to or how the Chromebook repositions PC companies to be able to adapt to the changes in uh, usage habits by their users, be it um, mostly for consumers, not necessarily in the enterprise yet, um, but the changing usage or the changing ways that consumers are actually interacting or using their devices on a daily basis, um, vendors that are able to offer a, a lightweight device that is essentially um, at its most basic level a large screen mobile device that has a keyboard attached to it, um, being able to offer that, that product will um, uh, will reestablish uh, consumer interest in a greater portfolio of products, but as far as direct um, impacts to revenue or profit, um, the the uh, low price of the device really hinders any any kind of momentum in those particular directions. Yes, we well we spotted a, a change in in, in uh, the Chromebooks when when Google repositioned. Um, them for consumers about mid last year, and the primary appeal, as as Acer puts it specifically in its in its marketing materials about the Chromebook, is its hassle-free computing, and we believe its appeal is an extension of the appeal of the of the tablet. 
It is uh, what we call a lightweight keyboard device. And while its impact on revenues, device revenues, is, is small, we believe that it's a growth area for, uh, for, for PCs and eventually perhaps for associated uh, services. We, we think that, that Chromebooks have been, have been well received in the consumer market and, and they will grow and that they will begin to come around to where, where Google originally uh, aimed them, which is institutional sales for users who don't need a full-fledged PC, who basically live inside the browser and that this at the worst for vendors is a threat. While it may not constitute a great opportunity, if, it, if vendors do not address this threat, they will be, uh, th this will cost them. Uh, in, uh, in business in particular, the success of Chromebook is tightly associated with the success of Google Apps. And uh, to the extent that Google Apps is, is definitely getting traction in larger business, businesses, that paves the way for a revision at the following cycle for, uh, for purchase of, of, of Chromebooks instead of, instead of uh, conventional PCs. Great. Uh, the next question we had came through. Uh, what technology initiatives are being rolled into smartphone and tablet vendors' go-to-market strategies? So what we've seen over the last year was as screen sizes got larger, um, there was a tremendous amount of innovation in the display technologies, um, you know, quad, quad core, uh, quad core smartphones, multi core tablets, um, extensibility through a growing Android app ecosystem, as well as continued maturation and refinement of the iOS ecosystem. And now what we're starting to see is not necessarily technology from a uh, nuts and bolts perspective, although certainly that's important given some of the usage um, scenarios that, um, that we want to use our devices for every day, whether it be media streaming or um, in some cases um, as much of a direct on-the-go replacement for um, our primary computing activities, whether we're at home or work. But now we're starting to see technology being brought to markets as a uh, as a roster of devices that meet the needs of what consumers in emerging markets are really looking for. So what we're starting to see is more or less a, a fragmentation of the smartphone device hardware ecosystem. So we, we start seeing things like uh, Firefox OS, um, a more or less cloud-connected, uh, a cloud-connected device that relies um, on its internet connection or its uh, 3 or 4G connection to be able to function as a phone. What that does for vendors is certainly get them in the game with a low-cost device, uh, not having to um, put in the capabilities to support a full-blown operating system or suite of applications on every device helps lower the cost. But what we're starting to see is um, technology continuing to trend in that direction and uh, providing a, a low-cost device that, uh, that can stand out through a series of technology that can be, um, that can be applied to uh, specific customer segments in, um, in Southeast Asia, for example, or providing um, social network connectivity, or in other words, just, just, just enough technology. Uh, for example, the um, recent line of Nokia Asha products is a really good example of this, and that they've, they've brought just enough technology to, this, to the feature phone to be able to do things like Facebook, be able to upload pictures, be able to have some sort of smartphone-like uh, camera and software functionality that um, not only expands the appeal of a company like Nokia to users in emerging markets, but also um, expands the footprint that Nokia has in, in that particular marketplace or paves inroads to markets where they know that that, um, that demand for that product will, uh, will likely reach a fever pitch within the next year or so as the next wave of devices gets ready uh, to be rolled out into the marketplace. Okay. Uh, 
Next question we had come through, guys. Are Android and Apple devices legitimate contenders in the enterprise? Ezra? I'll, 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 <laughs> uh, as core um, owned or tightly administered core functionality devices, for the most part, not. I mean, Apple's is, it, it's, Apple is stronger in, in, uh, in, in uh, enterprise connectivity and security. But uh, for the enterprise, the you know the tablet solution that that fits everything that that fits right into the existing ecosystem that doubles as a PC and a tablet is really Windows 8. So where you see um, Apple and 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 Android playing a role in enterprise is in dedicated and specific applications that have been developed on those platforms because they were available before the Windows platform as a generic information appliance complementary to your PC, the, the, the Windows 8 tablets are well on the way. The, the current status of the Windows 8 tablet is in the functions it performs as a tablet. The, the applications that are in the modern interface, what was called the modern interface, is a very fine tablet. It's far more limited at this point in terms of the real available applications than the other, than the other two platforms, but that, that's a temporary uh, uh, drawback to the platform, and, and, and as an enterprise device, the Windows 8 tablet really, really fills the bill. Jack, you want to weigh in? What? I think that pretty much covers it, um, but, <laughs> but cer certainly um, it's, so, what, so what, is, what is really behind asking that question, right, is that the, 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 um, the influence that these devices are having on the traditional enterprise computing paradigm, if you will, is that these devices are, are proliferating so quickly that they're beginning to force vendors to consider, um, or in some cases, um, certainly Apple touts that they're in 95% of the Fortune 500 today, um, to what capacity, um, certainly only, only they could speak to. Um, but the, the proliferation of these devices is really um, beginning to influence. That's really um, what I uh, wanted today's presentation to, to center around, is that there's these waves of change, if you will, that are being uh, propagated by, by the mobile device vendors are really reaching further than maybe some of us initially thought even two or three years ago or even when the first iPhone was introduced. It's certainly come a long way. And now, as our computing habits are beginning to change, um, and what we deem as actual bona fide computing devices, especially within the enterprise, are um, the the ideals and the standards that we have are really beginning to uh, to be um, influenced to larger and larger degrees by by the devices that we carry in our back pockets or in our bags every day. Great. So it doesn't look like we had any more questions come through, so I'm going to put one last feeler out there if anybody has any additional questions for either Ezra or Jack. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to point your attention to the social media links that I promised to give you at the end of the presentation. And I'd like to encourage you to follow both Jack as well as Ezra and TBR on Twitter. Uh, Jack is actually one of our most prolific uh, authors of Twitter, so he's definitely fun to follow if you guys are using Twitter at all. Um, again, the links to both SlideShare and YouTube are listed on the bottom of the screen, uh, as well as our uh, LinkedIn user group. So if you'd like to join any of those uh, to follow more about what TBR is doing in the device arena, please do. Uh, as you are leaving the webinar, we have a short survey, it's three quick questions. How good was the presenter? How good was the presentation, the content? And if you have any additional open-ended feedback, either on what we could be doing better or if there are certain trends or companies that you'd like us to focus on in the next webinar, that would be helpful. Uh, and again, I'd like to let you guys know that as clients of uh, the benchmark, you do have access to both Jack and Ezra if you'd like to have more in-depth discussion. So please do use them uh, for any questions you may have to help position your businesses better. I'm going to leave the chat function open for another couple of minutes just in case anyone has any last minute questions. And if we don't hear from you, uh, please be on the lookout for additional thought leadership documents that we are putting together and we'll be sending out over the next couple of months. And as Jack mentioned, we will be doing the next version of the devices benchmark in the fall. So you can look for that invitation to our next webinar as well. I'd like to thank everyone for your time and we look forward to speaking with you all in the next couple of months. Have a great afternoon, everyone. <laughs>